In my last video, I took this truth table for the RISC-V i32 CPU that I'm building, and I converted it into ROM component that I use for control signaling. But what I want to do today is, uh, I, did that, I did that manually, but I'd like to take this truth table and I'd like to automate converting it to a file that can be imported into Logisim. Logisim has the capability with ROM components to be able to save and um, load the contents of a ROM file. By the way, before I continue, I wanted to say thank you to all those that have been liking, subscribing, or just following along. Uh, it's nice whenever people do that. So again, I'd say thank you. So to convert this truth table into a ROM file, so let's take a look at this uh, ROM file. So Logisim saved the contents of the ROM from the last video that I did uh, in this format. It's, uh, it's called hex words plain. And you'll notice that there are 16 bytes per row. And there are uh, 32 rows altogether, which gives us 512 bytes, which uh, was the size. If you go back and look at the ROM here, it's a 512 uh, addressable bytes. They're actually five bits, but uh, it sort of rounds up to bite-sized, uh, well, not words, but bite-sized bytes, I guess. So can we build a Python script to convert this to this? Yes, I think we can. So let's do that. Okay, so let's start our Python file out uh, by uh, running main. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to read in the data from the truth table, and then we're gonna wanna create the output, the, the byte output, byte for byte. Uh, that we're going to put into the file. So I'm just going to call these words for now. And uh, we're going to create, so we want to create uh, a 512 list, which uh, I believe is nine bits, because that's the, the number of uh, input bits to the truth table. And we want to map those to five bits of control data output. So let's go ahead and initialize our word list. So I'm gonna say for X in range uh, 512, because that's how many of them we're gonna have. And then let's just append a zero at each spot. Okay, so let's go ahead and export the truth table so that we can see what this file is going to look like exported. So I'm going to say, uh, where is it? Oh, download. Uh, and I'm going to just do comma separated values. All right, so I downloaded and copied the truth table uh, and renamed it to TTCSV. So here's what our truth table looks like and you'll notice that um, we have nice column headings though as the second row of the table because I had you know labeled the inputs and the outputs in the truth table. Uh, so instead of manually deleting this I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an iterator that basically chops off that first line and so that can be done uh, I believe there is a uh, library in Python called iter tools And so let's create an iterator and you can use the I slice method. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pipe in the data from the truth table directly in standard in, um, just so I don't have to create files and such. We can just do that on the command line. And what I want to do is I want to basically, uh, slice 
the first record off of the file, and then I just want to read to the end of the file. So that's how I can do that. And also, uh, in order to get standard in, it looks like I need to import sys. So let's do that. Right. So now I have an iterator that'll just basically just slice off the first record of the file. So now what I want to do is I want to read the CSV. And again, there's a Python library for CSV reading. So I'm going to import CSV. And so let's create ourselves a reader uh, with uh, dict, let's see, I think it's dict reader. Yeah, dict reader. And then all we need to do is pass in the iterator that we just created. Great. So, uh, so let's see. So this will, so this will create an iterator to chop off first record of truth table. And then uh, this is going to open the truth table CSV file. So now we're going to process uh, all of our logic table rows. Right, so we're going to iterate over them. And I tell you what, for now, let's just, um, yeah, let's print, let's print the row just to see if this is going to work the way we expect. So in order to do that, I'm going to open up a new terminal. One of the things that I like to do for my Python projects is create a virtual environment just because you never know what version you're going to be dealing with. So I'm going to create a virtual environment So I'm going to say source uh, vnv bin activate to activate the environment. Okay, one thing I noticed before before I ran this is that I had uh, all of these underneath my for loop here, which obviously is not right for uh, creating all the words. So I pulled that out. Now let's run this. So Python build rom, and then it takes from standard in the truth table. So we need that. Okay, and so we have, yes, we have all the rows with dictionary entries for the column headings and then the values in each cell. So, so far, so good. Okay, so let's create an entry in each one of the, uh, for each one of the words that we find in the truth table. And um, you also recognize, if you saw the last video, I have an input hex and an output hex value. If I go back to the truth table here, you can see that there's an input hex and an output hex column. So I've already sort of concatenated and converted these to hex. So that actually makes it real easy for the Python script to put this data into this, uh, into this table. So we're going to say words. And then we need the index, the address, basically. So we're going to convert that hex value into an integer. And we're going to pull the integer from the row. And that's in the column called i hex. And then in order to convert that to an integer, we need to tell the integer function we're dealing with base 16. right? And we're then going to get the value to stick in here from row uh, o hex because that's the output hex number and then again um, that convert that from base 16 into decimal okay so now we have all of our words so if we just print words and run this again uh, yeah that looks correct there should be a few I think there's four yeah so we got 13, 17, there should be a one in here somewhere. Yep, there it is right there. So, okay, that's looking good as well. So now, so what we need to do is we need to create a file that looks like this. So here's what we're gonna do. 
So we need our first line to describe the format, because I think Logisim uses that. And so now we are going to iterate over the rows that we want to write out. And so there needs to be a row for each 16 bytes of data. So uh, what we're going to do is, uh, let's see, in range of what? So we need this to be 512 of these things divided by 16, right? We should be 32, but we'll just put that in explicitly so that we kind of give an, get an idea of what we're doing here. So we're going to say uh, need to write words in 16 byte rows hex formatted, right? Because these are all in. These are all, they, it doesn't look it, but these are all hex bytes. Um, oh yeah, zero F, so you can see that right there. Right, so let's initialize a line to write to nothing. Uh, now we're gonna iterate over each one of the words. So we're gonna say for Y in range uh, 16, because there's gonna be 16 of them per line and then we're gonna concatenate to the line uh, let's do an f string because I think this I think an f string is easier so we need to grab uh, our words one of the words and we need to make sure that we grab the right one so we're gonna grab uh, x times 16 right because that's uh, x is the row that that we're on and then we need the offset from y that we're iterating over right and then to format to format that in hex uh, i believe the f string formatting is uh, we want two zeros or two um, two places in hex format i think that's i think that's what that will do and then at the end of all of that, we're going to have uh, a, a, a line that is going to have an extra space on it. And I forgot to add the space because at, at begin, in between each one of these bytes, there needs to be a space. So at the last, at the end of the line, there's going to be an extra space. So I want to chop that off. Um, and I believe you do that with a slicing operator like that, that should chop off the last space of the line. So let's print this line and see what we get. Uh, yeah. So we can run this. Let's just, um, let's just pipe the output now into control.rom. And so our control.rom looks like this, and our test ROM that I saved looks like this. And this sort of, yeah, this looks identical to me. There's 33 of them, 33, yep, 32 rows because there's the header row. Yeah, I would say, I would say that looks fine. So um, let's go ahead and load this into Logisim. We're going to open the file that we just created. That was control ROM. We're going to say open and it looked like it opened it. So I'm going to close the window and yeah, it's kind of hard to tell whether that actually took, but so, so now what I suggest we, what I suggest we do is let's go ahead and finish the register to register instructions. Cause I only did four of them in the last video. So let's finish them expand the truth table 
and then we'll run the script over again, and then we'll demonstrate that uh, we can load the new values from the truth table into this ROM. I'm gonna go ahead and sort of fast forward through that um, because if you if if you wanna know how to do it, I, I demonstrated in the last video in pretty explicit detail. So for now, I'm just gonna kind of go through and uh, fill all of these in. I think that fills in the truth table. Let's hopefully, hopefully I got all those right. And again, if you want to know how I did that, please go back and watch my prior video. I've got it, I've got it as a card up on the upper right. Okay, so let's uh, download this. Okay, now let's open the new truth table up. Yes, so now we have a um, bunch more instructions here to play with. So let's go ahead and run the Python script again and create a new control ROM file. Let's look at this control ROM and see if we have more uh, values in here. Uh, it looks like, yeah, I do see more values. Okay, so let's load that control ROM in here. Right, so presuming now we have the data path for all of those register to register instructions in place. Okay, so off camera, I use the on, risk Live Online Assembler, which the link to this is in the description. And I put in a few additional instructions that I just added and then uh, b did a build and then took the hex dump from those instructions and then just added it up here for reference. So. Let's go ahead and check now that the Python script that I wrote actually allowed us to load these new control signals into the ROM file correctly. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and put some uh, data values back in X3 and X4, and uh, I'm going to use um, and I'm going to use uh, five and one here. And then if I put in the XOR, so if I XOR five and one, I should get a four because the exclusive OR should um, OR the fours place, uh, but not the ones place. So if I put in oh oh four one C one three three and I get a four. So now I'm going to tick the clock and I should see this four load into register two. So let's take a look at the register file. And yes, I see four in register two. So that instruction seems to work. All right, so let's do a shift left. So this does a shift left of register three, which contains, I believe, the five. Right, so a shift left operation, one space, if I go back to the data path. So I'm shifting left one space, so that's, that's the effect of multiplying by two. So I would expect to see an A here on the output. So let's see what this does. Zero, zero, one, one, nine, one, one, three. I see a five, that's not correct. Let's see, did I get that right? 119, 113. 119, 113. Yes. And my instruction is 119, 113. Interesting. Oh, so our data B value does not have a 1 in it. Oh, that's, oh, uh, because, oh, I believe I know what's going on here. 
Uh, and the reason is because that's an immediate value. So one right here, uh, that involves an immediate value, not a register value. And so that is not coming through RS2. Uh, that'll be coming from a different place uh, on the instruction, which I do not have mapped in this data path. And I didn't use the uh, register, the uh, X4 register. So let me go ahead and fix that. It's interesting that this online assembler viewed this as a valid instruction because this register, that's not a register, it's an immediate value. So in theory, this should actually have been that, which it didn't change the machine language instruction. So I guess, this assembler is a little relaxed in that these two it views as the same instruction, even though I guess if I were writing it, I would call that an error. Um, so if I put an X4 in here, or if I put an I in here, will it flag this as an error? Yeah, so it does flag, yeah, so it does flag that as an error, which I would expect. But interestingly, it will not flag this as an error. That's an immediate instruction. Okay. In any case, what I really meant, this is what I really meant to do. And so let me build this. So 419133, that should be our correct machine language instruction. So here, So that is the correct machine language instruction for that instruction. Right, so now let's uh, go back into the register file and I wanna shift the number five over one, which will, in theory, give us 10. Right, so now if I put in for shift logical left, the correct machine language, 419, 113, Oh, okay, and so so I, I'm getting data A and data B correct. So that's the one that we're supposed to shift, and that's the value, that's the value five that we're supposed to shift. However, the selector that's coming through is wrong. This should be the selector should be uh, a one here. Oh, well, it would help if I could copy, <laughs> if, I, if I could copy down the machine language correctly. This should be 133. No wonder it's not working. Goodness. Okay, so you, some of you were probably screaming at the, screaming at your screen. There we go, there we go. A, so shifting the number five over by one should yield 10, which is A, that is correct. So now if I tick the clock and go back to the register file, we see A in register two. So now the shift logical left seems to be working. So let's do set less then. So I've got a five, so is five uh, less than one, it's not. So I would expect to see a zero here when I put this next instruction in. And I do see a zero. Uh, let's, for grins, let's just go ahead and switch these values around. So I'm gonna put a one I'm gonna put a one in here. 
and I'm going to put the five in here. And then let's see. So set less than uh, one and a five should be true. And that is, is yielding a one on the output, which is correct. And then that should put this one into register two. So if I tick the clock. Yes, yeah, so we see the one in register two. So those instructions seem to be working correctly. So I think I'll end this video, I at least accomplish what I wanted to, which is to be able to create a Python script to uh, create a ROM file that can be loaded in, which will serve us really well as we continue to build out the data path and uh, the truth table over time. I will uh, add this script to a GitHub repository that I will put into the description uh, in case you want to take it and use it. It's not very long. You could retype it, but it, it will, it may get bigger over time as we continue to extend the truth table. So uh, with that, thanks for watching.